you can jump directly to each chapter by clicking on the times shown in the YouTube description. Finally, we are going to bring all the parts together to create our chronograph steampunk clock. We need to start by fixing each part of the chronograph's clock movement together. You'll need the Minutes Display Assembly, the Clock Movement Assembly, the Hour Drive Gear, the three long M4 brass machine screws and the painted spacers. Firstly, poke the three long brass screws through the holes in the minutes display assembly as shown. Turn it over and sit it on a flat surface so the three screws face upwards. Now place one of the spacers onto each of the brass screws. Then check the hour drive gear is the correct way up. The small engraved circle should be facing downwards. Use gentle even pressure around the centre of the gear to push it onto the clock movement's hour spindle. It should end up positioned as shown. Now lift up the clock movement assembly, flip it over and lower it onto the three brass screws. It should look like this. Find the side gear assembly and the copper rod connector. Place the copper rod connector over the top right brass screw as shown. Then place another spacer on the bottom left brass screw. Only one spacer is required for this part of the assembly and this is where it should go. Rotate the side gear that you have assembled so it faces downwards and place it over the two brass screws as shown. Don't force the side gears, as you may need to move the pendulum to the right and then to the left to allow the side gears to slide into place. Now get three more spacers and place them over each of the brass screws so it looks like this Now it's time to fix the chronograph to the polished wooden plaque. Find the three M4 steel nuts from your collection of parts. Turn the polished wooden plaque over so it's sitting face down on a flat surface. Line up the clock movement with its three brass screws facing upwards.
and lower the plaque over the brass screws so they poke through the holes as shown. Loosely finger tighten a steel knot onto the end of each of the three brass screws. Then you can turn it over and see all the layers of your chronograph loosely fixed in place. Now it's time to attach the gear that supports the hour gear whilst it's turning. Find the painted smaller hour support gear and the two small 2mm thick spacers along with one of the stainless steel rivets from your collection of fixings and the painting dowel. These parts are going to fit here. Place one of the spacers here. Then place the other spacer on top of the support gear. And carefully slide it over the top of the first spacer. Insert the conical end of the 4mm painting dowel into the gear hole to line everything up. Then push the stainless steel rivet through the chronograph cutout one of the spacers, the gear, the second spacer and the second chronograph cutout. It will be held in place by the tight hole in the support gear so no glue will be required. Don't push it in too far as it needs to remain loose. If it's too tight it won't be turned by the clock movement and could stop it from rotating. Now we need to glue in the next three rivets. I'd suggest using super glue, but you could use an appropriate alternative. You'll need another three rivets from your collection of fixings. Place a ring of super glue around one of the rivets. Check that the holes in the copper rod connector and chronograph cutout line up, if not rotate the copper rod connector until they do, then push the rivet into the hole. Now apply a band of super glue around another rivet and push it through the hole in the centre of the clock spring assembly as shown. Finally, place a small drop of superglue in the upper and lower holes of the chronograph cutouts as shown. Be careful not to get any on the surfaces that are seen. And push in the next stainless steel rivet. Leave the glue to set. About five minutes should be sufficient if you are using superglue. A pair of pliers will be required to adjust and tighten the mechanism. As you haven't yet tightened the three long brass screws and nuts, the top and bottom layers of the chronograph can be moved slightly and it will be possible to align the support gear's rivet vertically. Check the hour support gear rivet is vertical and it's free to turn. Then tighten the three nuts on the back of the chronograph with your pair of pliers. Again, check the hour support gear turns freely. If not, loosen the nuts and readjust the gear rivet and its spindle.
Now to attach the hour display gear. You'll need a posi drive or flat bladed screwdriver. And from your collection of fixings, another rivet, a 20mm long M4 brass machine screw, the two large headed steel M4 machine screws, the two M4 brass washers, the M4 steel washer and the card spacer. You'll also need the hour display gear support and the hour display gear. Screw the brass M4 machine screw into the threaded hole. Screw it in until you can see the end of the screw appear within the rivet hole. Then unscrew it so the hole is clear and the rivet can slide freely into it. Line the hour dial support up with the two slotted holes in the plaque. The slots will allow the support to be adjusted. Using the two wide headed M4 steel screws loosely fix the support onto the plaque. The next job is to fix the hour display gear onto its support so it can be adjusted to ensure the hour display gear and hour gear mesh perfectly horizontally and also vertically. Place one of the M4 brass washers onto the rivet then place the rivet through the hour display gear. Then place the second brass washer onto the rivet. Now lift up your chronograph so you can push the rivet into the hour gear support without the washer falling off. Place one end of the card spacer between the hour display gear and the head of the rivet. And then tighten its fixing screw. Remove the card spacer and it should turn freely. The gears should also line up vertically. If they don't, loosen the fixing screw and use one of the extra washers to adjust the hour display gears height so it does line up. You can also move the hour display gear within its slots to ensure it meshes perfectly with the hour drive gear. When it looks like this, not too tight and not too loose, tighten the adjusting screws on the back of your chronograph. Now to fix on the pressure cylinder and coiled copper rod. You'll need a screwdriver for this. Find your copper painted pressure cylinder and the coiled copper rod from its bag. Bend the copper rod so its ends are at 90 degrees. Also make sure that they are in line and bend the rod so that the sections of the coil are spaced equidistantly. Insert the short end into the laser cut pipe connector. So the long end lines up with the centre of the hole where the pressure cylinder will fit. Hold the pressure cylinder as shown so you can align the long end of the rod with its centre. And bend it so it will align vertically with the centre of the pressure cylinder. 
Having bent the copper rod to line up with the centre of the pressure cylinder, loosen the hour display gear support screws so that you can fit your painted pressure cylinder into the hole and slide it into the support as the copper rod is gently inserted into the pressure cylinder connector. Move the hour display gear within its slots to ensure it meshes perfectly with the hour drive gear. When it looks like this, not too tight and not too loose, tighten the hour display gear support whilst ensuring the hour gears still mesh properly without causing too much friction. Again, check that the gears do mesh properly and if not, readjust the support slightly. Your chronograph should look like this. If your painted pressure cylinder does get scratched, or the polished finish on your plaque is damaged, you can repaint the cylinder and repolish part of the plaque, and then reassemble it. Now to assemble and attach the hour pointer. You'll need a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. Find the hours engraving and from your fixings collection the 12mm long M3 steel screw the M3 brass washer, the M3 brass dome nut and the M3 brass hexagonal spacer. You'll also need the hour pointer from your collection of cleaned laser engravings. These are the six parts you'll require. Poke the top of the M3 hexagonal spacer through the hour engraving. Then place the brass M3 washer onto it, the hour pointer, and finally the M3 brass dome nut. Don't tighten it firmly just yet, as it needs to be screwed into this hole in the wooden plaque. So push the steel M3 screw through the hole from the back and screw it into the hexagonal brass spacer and tighten it up. Once everything is lined up, tighten the brass domed nut. It may be necessary to move the hour hand anti-clockwise a little before tightening so it ends up pointing in the right direction. It should look like this. Now to attach the brass ball chain. A pair of side cutters would be very helpful, along with a pair of pliers. I'd suggest using super glue, but you could use a suitable alternative. You'll need the brass ball chain from your collection. and it's far easier to attach the ball chain if your chronograph is standing upright, so I'd suggest supporting it with a few books or similar. Slide one end of the ball chain into the slot in the pressure pipe connector, as shown.
Then lay your chronograph on a flat surface and lower the other end of the ball chain through the side gear ball chain connector as shown. Stand it up again and guide the ball chain over the pulley. Using the pliers gently pull any loose balls through to the back. Don't pull too hard as the chain only needs to be slightly taut. Now place a small drop of super glue on the ball chain as shown just to hold it in place. Then place a small drop of super glue on the back of the pulley to hold the chain in place. Finally place a small drop of super glue where the ball chain enters the tube. If using super glue, leave it to set for about 5 minutes. Then cut off the excess chain with the pair of side cutters. And your affixed brass ball chain should look like this. We now need to position and fix on the chronograph's minute hand. Find the minute hand. From the back of your chronograph, release the pendulum if it's sitting over the clock movement adjusting wheel. Now turn the clock movement adjusting wheel so the hour display moves incrementally until the next hour lines up with the hour pointer. And push the minute hand onto the clock movement so it points to 12. This will ensure the hour display is synchronised with the minute hand. Finally, we need to attach the mercury compensated pendulum to your chronograph. Find your mercury compensated pendulum. And hook it onto the clock movements pendulum. By the way, this chronograph is shown on the optional mantel clock stand. Congratulations! You've now completed your very own steampunk chronograph. All that remains to do is to insert an AA battery in the clock movement, set the time, and stand back and enjoy your newly created, horologically elegant Victorian timepiece. <laughs>